So before 10E came around, what do you think you would have been doing to, to meet those chart audits? We try, well, what we were doing in the, in the past was we'd get a list of three, 400 patients and they need this visit, that visit, or these visits on the different patients that, that the lists come in. We, we get those in HEDIS also from payers. And so it's, we're absorbing, when I came here four years ago, we had a, a, probably a part-time person doing release of information. Now I have a, a full FTE plus another one to do prior OS and all the administrative that comes with that. So I have a person dedicated to do nothing but release information all day long. I don't want to pay for a second one. And I have the tools because the clinicals changes and advancements with Tenny, it's so much easier. We earlier on set up a, an arrangement with the local hospital and gave them access to eClinical. And that was a go over there, teach their IT staff how to load clients and software and all these types of things on PCs, whereas now that's, that's a thing of the past. It's made it much right. easier. And their staff like it a lot easier too. Right, and I guess you don't have to spend your own resources, your own right. people's time exactly. to do those chart audits. Now that group right. can, that wants the information can do it on their right. own. You know, we, we focus a lot on uh, what the office is doing to improve their own process. Um, but the patient, of course, is the whole reason that the doctor's office and medicine itself exists in the first place. So with all the changes that you guys put into place, how are you making sure that your patients don't get left behind? Well, we try to get them access to the portal. Um, we have you know, different campaigns. We're actually running a campaign now for moms to engage moms and <clears throat> get access to Hilo Mom and get um, be able to reach our OBGYNs um, easily. Right, and then at the same time in the registration process, we've developed a, just it's second nature for them to try to get people enabled in the portal. Um, we we've, we've began the process early. Uh, some people are slow to move in technology. In a, in a rural community, it's oh, computers, a lot, not everybody has a computer and that's fine, but to engage the patients and share the information is one thing. We started, we publish our statements online. We've worked out a, a lot of the processes and releasing. Patients are now used to that. Uh, some of the other health systems in, in the area uh, also have that kind of a capability. So we, we do that, it's not foreign, but the other side is, is when we go through that and implement those things, one of the things that I try to get my staff in, in uh, business office and health information is to get them to understand just that. We, when the patient's there, we have to make sure they get it. But we can throw all the stuff at them. We want the, all the great tech. Oh, yeah, we can send you this and we can send you that. And they are just like not seeing it. And if we don't make that connection, it's of no help to nobody, to anybody. And so the other thing is, is that Little by little, we get a, a rapport developed with our patient population that will help when it comes to navigating changes in health insurance. How do they deal with high deductibles? How are they going to manage just getting the health care they need when the costs don't seem to go down, the health insurance premiums go up, they have health insurance, but there's a high deductible, so what are they paying for? those types of things. And so we try to become, a, my, my goal here, at least at Brown Clinic, is to become more of an advocate to help the patients navigate that process, as opposed to the old bill collector mentality. We don't, I try to get away from that. Uh, it is certainly unpredictable, as right. it can be uh, unpredictable, absolutely. as you sure. said. So how do you help the patients make that more predictable? Uh, one of the things that we've recently been focused on is doing patient care estimation and try to get people an, an estimate of what their costs, potentially their out-of-pocket costs could be, so they can plan. Uh, it's we're still it's a work in progress. We're still developing that. But my goal is that the patients, when they're contemplating, you know, we have a new mom, expectant mom. If we sit down and walk through with them, okay, here's typically what the costs are associated with the the pregnancy and the delivery and those types of things and help them know today as opposed to, oh, I'm happy I got my baby and then I just got my bill. Ugh. You know, help them plan Put it back in. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <clears throat> can I get a do-over? But uh, so it's just, you know, try to help people anticipate that by giving them the information to make decisions that they need to. When I think the more you engage the patient, the less surprises they have and the right. more comfortable exactly. they feel. Yep, exactly. So Jen, you mentioned a few minutes ago uh, something about a campaign to, to let 
patients know about some of these tools. Uh, yep. Tell us tell us a little bit about what that campaign looks like and what the patients get out um, of that. Well, we are rolling out with our marketing. We actually have a marketing crew that helps us do this, but um, they're rolling out. They rolled out videos with the providers, you know, and so so they get that hometown feel from us, and and so they get to hear in the providers words what it means to them to service their community. Um, and along with that, then they, um, you know, we're rolling out Hilo Mom so they can have access to that and um, schedule patient or appointments easily through the portal um, if they have a portal account. But then we've also tried to engage those that didn't have a portal account by allowing them access to email like us directly where we can then turn around and give them a portal account. Kind of redirect them. Right, correct. That, that way. And how do you let them know that all this is out there? Well, we have Facebook, um, and right. I think we have our, we our social media. We have website. our website is updated with some. Uh, now, when you go to the website at brownclinic.org, it'll you go on that homepage. You're gonna it's gonna pop up a video immediately with uh, some of the providers' interviews and comments about uh, the OB care they provide and uh, deliveries and what it means to them to take care of those people here at home. Uh, because the larger health systems, we have a hospital in town here, but the larger health systems are in some cases nearly 100 miles away so we try to try to keep right. it at home and, and work within the community and uh there's billboards in town and stuff stuff like that so we do a fair mar all marketing channels multi-channel right sure sure are you using the uh the campaign feature with uh, eClinical messenger at all to get any of those we've used it well, not specifically for this but we have used it in the past for quite commonly for like flu shot campaign and those type of things it's helpful uh, we do have a Medicare wellness visit uh, right. campaign as well, which right. you might be using as mm -hmm. an ACO. Sure. Uh, that might be uh, something that, that your patients have gotten in the past. We, we've been talking about how you guys are super users and uh, how you've accumulated all of this this knowledge that you spread to the rest of your practice to drive the adoption. Do, do you think that a super user is all about the, the information, the knowledge that they have, or is there like a process component to it? I think probably both um, because you need the knowledge but then you need to be able to be organized and set up how to run the process and how to implement it mm -hmm. I, I agree it's it's kind of a combination the the other part that's the intangibles is if you have a smaller group of people that are comfortable with what you're doing in the technology a template or a process or an order whatever the case happens to be if somebody's comfortable and confident, that's going to by itself instill some confidence and comfort in the people that are trying to learn it because they're not sure. There's some value there in that person who's calm and collected and, and like you said, has that yeah. mentality of don't worry, we'll figure it out. Right. And that, uh, that'll that be helpful as well. And you mentioned right. uh, you, you went through the PCMH process. Yes. What, was, what was that like for you? Was that valuable? Very valuable. It was a long process. I think here it was a nearly a little bit over a year process of understanding the requirements for reporting and all the different standards you have to meet for NCQA. Uh, we started out with the goal of getting PCMH certification. We, we uh, attained level three PCMH certification with the 2014 standards and we lived through a change in the standard at the same time we were trying to become certified. So it was almost like ramping it all up and starting over. But I think that wasn't a bad thing. The process of of living through that and developing procedures and policies and documentation requirements to meet PCMH certification requirements were helpful in the mindset of the organization. We have to do certain things. The ownership uh, decided they wanted to become PCMH certified, so that was our goal. How we got there absolutely depended upon our staff, and they did a wonderful job. We went through that in clinical. We had consultation services through PCMH certification wonderful support there, walked us right down the path, although it took a little over a year. Um, that then became the foundation we use now to uh, jump off to other program requirements as they come across. That helped us establish the base for how we do ACO reporting and those types of things because we're, it's nothing new to us to have this requirement of having to report. So it's just Instead of reporting this way, you just do it this way. You just tweak it a little bit and it works fine. Right. If you have that foundation there, that right. process foundation, exactly. it's easy to, to change it. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, as you said, I think that there's a value there in making sure that it's written down, making sure that everyone knows and that it's right. very strong. Absolutely. Uh, and, and as you move along, if you have a good foundation of a process, 
you can adapt it pretty much to everything in, in what we do. Healthcare is healthcare is healthcare. We're still all about taking care of patients. That's the piece you can't lose focus on. Yes, we have reporting requirements, but at the same time, it still boils down to how can we provide quality care for our patients. So, so what's up next for your group? Well, we're in the middle of, we just actually just recently be, uh, were connected to Carry Quality Network, so we're, we're trying to forge that. Some of that is causing us to reach out to facilities outside our, our organization to start forge, forging some uh, rapport and relationship to deal with how the technology is going to come into play. Um, the other thing that we're working with, uh, I was mentioning earlier, we uh, at the beginning of another client here in South Dakota, we partnered up together and we're going to rally up and develop a user group in South Dakota so we can help each other. Uh, I think we've uncovered, uh, I think six. there's six clients in South Dakota right now um, that could represent hundreds of miles. but. It's the, you know, we actually cross time time zones, which is kind of funny, but we're pro collecting the group and, it, and it's in its infancy. We're uh, gonna start working together. And then uh, I discussed with our SAM the possibility of having a, like a quarterly conference call or something like that with all the SAMs and the, the client representatives just to continue to work. Cause we're all running against the same challenges, be it nationally or locally, even here in the state, we have requirements that we have to meet. And uh, so if we can help each other, then it all works better. Plus, the clinical benefits from having a cross-section of knowledge in this area anyways that's willing to help anybody. So, so this is interesting. You're going to include the e-clinical work side in your user group then. Right. That doesn't, that's, from what I've heard so far, that's, that's not uh, been the we, case with we, other we groups. We started out thinking, uh, and I had lots of conversation with our Sam, and he's a great, is great support there. We discussed the initial piece of we only have a f handful of clients. Let's get the same SAM. Then we're all on the same page. And so we, p I posed that, and uh, that was like, yeah, well, you know, the time zone thing was one thing, another thing. Right, because you then are then split among two sure, here in South sure. Dakota, yes. And so at the same time, there potentially uh, uh, could be some contractual differences with the structure of the organization and the contract with the clinical and whatnot. So as opposed to dealing with all that we had the conversation last week actually to talk about well heck why don't we just get them all together and we'll just get together once a quarter or whatever and uh, we do weekly calls with our sam and that's very helpful so well and i think our sam has been really great and oh, yeah. and, and open with us and so we feel comfortable with him not necessarily just you know sugar coating things and just because we're here to solve a problem. Right. We, we don't necessarily want to point a finger at no. who for, no. you know, what happened. We, we just want to solve a problem, and he's been open and honest oh, and very well. it, transparent. I, I have to say that I feel, I feel strongly that our, our Sam, our account manager at eClinical Works, is truly our advocate to eClinical on our behalf, which is wonderful. And so the, the fear we had in this whole mm -hmm. endeavor was, don't take our Sam away. We want him to be the guy, you know, those types of things. So it, it, I think it's going to work well. And again, I said it's just, just a work in progress. And I think that uh, we're looking forward to being able to do bigger and better things across the, the state. So so with all your, your knowledge and experience, what would be some recommendations that you make to uh, other clients to, to be more successful with their adoption of, of uh, these medical record technologies? Probably to know your system and know what you're trying to do. Um, because I've told other clients before, it's like if you ask if eClinical Works can do something, technically they probably can, but it's a matter of does it work for your facility? Is it going to work for right. your process? Sure. Uh, education is an example. Uh, the staff that come on site to do education when you're doing your implementation are coming to teach you and train you on how the software works as it's designed. They're not coming to tell you how it works in your organization. And so how you operate and how you process and your workflows and whatnot, having a good handle on that is always a good thing. And, and I always say, I've said for years that in, in industry, in manufacturing industries, if they're going to make a change, like changing to an EMR, they're going to make a change in their system on their assembly line, they adapt their processes to the new equipment and the new process. In healthcare, for some reason, we get stuck on 
we like how we've been doing it forever and we want to make that new tool work our old way and it doesn't work all the time. And so I, I, to me, it's don't be afraid of the technology, be willing to have oh, being open-minded and embrace what you can do and look at it as a process improvement add-on as opposed to this, oh my gosh, I have to use this chart, um, that's too many clicks. Well, let's work through it together. And that's one of the things I think we enjoy here is we have a good enough rapport within the organization that we're constantly trying to make it better. You know, if we can remove one click and make a doctor happy, sweet. Then that phone won't ring for a while. Then you move on to the next call, right? Right. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned uh, tools a couple times right. through, throughout the, the episode. And of course, an EMR is just another tool. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you right. mentioned screwdrivers right. and drills and stuff sure. like that. I mean, what, what kind of a, a similarity do you see there? For us, the tools in looking at, at what's available within a clinical, anymore EMRs aren't one size fits all like they were 10, 15 years ago. Nowadays, it's the pick the parts that work for you. So it's much like you walk in and you open up this toolbox and you've got all these new shiny little tools in there and it's like, this is going to be fun. Well, where do I start? Which tool do I pick up to begin with? One of the things that, that is a tendency, I think, for new clients when they look at it is, well, we're just going to do the scheduling part first and then we'll worry about the billing part, or we'll do the billing part, then we'll do the scheduling part, and then we'll work on care planning or whatever. We chose to just jump in and do the whole thing. And uh, I think that helped require us or force us to learn quicker. Mm -hmm. and, and coming from another electronic medical record system to a clinical was uh, certainly a benefit, so the, the gap wasn't as, as wide for us to bridge. But the other thing is, is we probably, I would say, we, we laugh sometimes when we're having calls with the clinical because they're like, you guys at Brown Clinic, you use almost the whole system. If there's a module, we pretty much have it turned on. And so when you go to the product activation tab, there's not many left <laughs> to activate because each and every piece will help you. In one part might help another part, and you just don't know it until you try it. Now, have we turned on things and turned them off? Sure. But... You have to be willing to explore and see how it's going to fit in your organization. If it's not a good fit, okay, shut it off. That's okay. Um, but at the same time, as we develop, then we can also learn. And we, we've we become known to, if we find a glitch or a, a bump in a system, we're going to call and say, hey, this isn't working right. Because we have that kind of rapport with eClinical, but at the same time, our SAM and that, we know that we can just reach out and say, this doesn't work. And we work it together. It should be this, 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 this. And so um, I think that's important for people to be willing to see that, but at, at the same time, not be afraid of it. In modules or a la carte type environment that, that systems are now, people get caught up with, well, am I gonna have to pay more for that? Well, sure, it's, you're not gonna get something for nothing, but at the same time, if on the backside, the cost to benefit is, you have a better benefit for organization or patients or both, and it's a win-win, why wouldn't you want to do that? Right. I like, I like the analogy of, of taking a trip through the store sure. rather than having the anxiety of maybe, you know, having a test or something like that sure. or, or sure. You know, how, to, how do I know it all right away? You can kind of pick and choose what you're ready right. for uh, and use those things. And, and I also like you don't always get the, the hammer along with the saw. Right. But right. you can buy them both and sometimes they get bundled together. Right. Well, we greatly appreciate your expertise and your knowledge. And, and of course, you guys have become super users through through a lot of uh, you know effort and, and, and work. Uh, and of course, eClinical Works also has a program to help people become super users, mm -hmm. uh, where they can come to eClinical Works itself and and be trained. And uh, uh, you know, so some some organizations will send a representative. Did you guys do that at all? Nope. Or did you we guys didn't. learn it all on your own? Uh, self-made super users. Well, that's <laughs> great. Go well, self-made <laughs> learning and uh, uh, aggressive networking at the conference. <laughs> That's right. Those conferences yeah, we right. see, we there saw you there is. at Nashville right, a few right. years ago. Yeah. It was great yeah. to see you. Yeah. I think you guys are going back again this year to Dallas, Correct. so we'll look right. forward to seeing you there. Yeah. Uh, so, for those of our clients who don't 
feel as confident about making themselves into super users. As I said, eClinicalWorks does offer a program. You can send a representative or, or several uh, to eClinicalWorks. We'll get you trained up and help you to reach that that peak that right. uh, Brown Clinic here has reached. Well, thank you guys so much yes. for all of your time and, you. uh, and your information. You it was a great pleasure to have you here. Uh, you can check out our other episodes on iTunes, YouTube, and my.eclinicalworks.com. For the eClinical Works podcast, I'm Adam Salati. Thanks for watching. This broadcast and its contents are the sole property of eClinical Works and are protected by federal law and international treaties. You are strictly prohibited from making a copy of, modification of, or form of rebroadcasting or re-encoding this broadcast without prior written permission from eClinical Works Public Relations, except as many be permitted by law. This broadcast is provided for informational purposes only. It is intended as a personal, non-commercial use. Product specifications are subject to change without notice. Please contact eClinicalWorks Public Relations with any questions. eClinicalWorks V10 EHR is ONC HIT 2014 edition certified as a complete EHR. eClinicalWorks V10 CC 2014 95 54 47 1.